Welcome back to this week's episode of Grindstone Workshop, the show where we make props and costumes inspired by the mobile RPG Summoner's Blade. Today, we... you know, it's really disconcerting how you keep popping up like that. Do you, uh, spooky. Hey, Brian. Great. Hey. 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 Stop doing that. Hey Brian, great job on the last two cosplay builds. Today, we'd like you to create a sword belonging to one of our most beloved monsters, Lapis. I've been hitting the treadmill lately, which is basically the same thing as being outside, and I'm feeling really in touch with nature. So why don't you create Lapis' sword out of gardening materials? Gardening materials? Yeah, that could be a cool idea. Brian, you have been banned from the Skybound office. Did you not see the signs when you walked in? Uh, no. Okay, this is my home now. This is my lamp. I know some of these people, and I am I am not leaving. I already forwarded my mail. No. <laughs> well, since we're doing a gardening themed episode anyways, and I well, I really didn't want to be in that stuffy skybound office uh, for the rest of the day, so um We're at Ian's house! And I have it on good authority that he's expecting some new gardening materials delivered today. Yeah, I'm expanding the garden. It should be really nice. Okay, great. Well, I left the garage unlocked. So have your delivery guy leave everything in there and just close the door behind him. Wait, I thought you said this was your house. Do we have permission to be here? <laughs> You're funny. Let's go. Lapis is an absolute staple of the game, especially early on. And if you equip the right runes with her, she can level your monsters really quickly. So if you're at the early stages of the game, I highly recommend you equip Fatal and Blade runes. Speaking of blades, here's how we're gonna make ours. First things first, every sword needs a blade. Luckily, I think Ian was gonna make some, some heavy duty shelving for his plants. So we actually got this flat stock steel. Yeah, that feels, that feels more right. The hilt, uh, has got all these different angles. It's got a big blue crystal in the middle of it. There's a lot of different little geometric pieces. So, luckily, we found these little Simpson beam connector things. And then maybe once our blade is made, sandwich them together like that. But we need that blue crystal. Well, I needed a glass of water, so I went into Ian's house because he left his door unlocked. And he's got these really cool drawer handles. Once I cut it apart, that's gonna be perfect. Thanks, Ian. At the base of our sword, we have a pommel, which is literally uh, French, I believe, for little apple. So there you go. Uh, we're actually gonna use this female-female coupler that I can take apart and actually put pieces together. And I found this piece of threaded sprinkler pipe here. Put this together here. And then, on one of his cabinets, he had one of these. You know, obviously to match the drawer handles here. So, I think if I'm able to mount this onto something and thread it into there. Now, for the grip, it does seem to be sort of gold and some sort of textured weaving. And I found textured glitter duct tape! Whoa, whoa, ba -ba -ba. I'm excited about it, so you know, that's fine. When I do a big project with lots of little pieces, I like to keep everything in individual little trays here. For our hilt here, these little flanges gotta go. So I'm gonna take it over to our anvil here. We're gonna smash them flat. So 
So I'm using a rawhide mallet because it has uh, less bounce back, it's not as loud, even though we're totally allowed to be here. Now I'm gonna go take it over to the bandsaw and cut off the flame. So now that the flanges are cut off, I also put a little angle right there, so that way it can fit into the trough of our lower hilt. Just like that. So we've got our pommel connected to our handle here, and we've got some more threads on the other side. Uh, I found this T-joint here, uh, which threads on really nicely, and so that way we're able to get a nice connection here, and then we'll slot it, fit the blade in there, and it's gonna be perfect. So I've roughed out our blade shape. I'm gonna cut it out on here, staying well outside the lines, and then we'll use an angle grinder to actually true it up. We have a metal cutoff disc, and then we have a, kind of an abrasive. So I'm gonna start with this to get us a little close, and I'm gonna use this guy right here to actually do the shaping. Now this is real dangerous, so don't try it at home. Go to a friend's house. Our blade is roughed out. I'll do some a little more work on it later. Uh, I'm gonna go cut a tang, which is that narrow piece that goes inside the handle, and then I'm gonna take a piece of all thread, which is basically a rod that has all thread, and I'm going to weld it onto the end of that tang, and then our blade will be ready to go. Okay, so I did a bunch more grinding work, did a kind of a, I started to polish it, and then I realized Ian's coming home tonight, so no time for that. But we have our blade shape, I got a little fancy with it. We've got our tang that I was talking about that we cut into it, we have attached our all thread. All right, so we've cut that T-joint, and then this, I went ahead and I put a slot in it there, you can kind of see right there, where our blade will sit to hold it in place. For our jewel settings, we've got our flying chevron shape there, and I went ahead and I trimmed out, as you can see, right there, Right there, so it fits over it like that. We need to trim off the sides of this, so let me get it hacks off. Catch. If you're using wood or softer material, larger teeth saws are great. But for metal, you really want a smaller tooth so it can take out that material as you go without dulling the teeth. We've now got our tiny jewel of power, woo! Oh, it's kind of sharp, so I'm gonna deburr the edges. Hold the file on the table and hold the piece you're filing. Much better. If I attach this guy right here to there, and then we drill and tap, tap meaning I, once I make a hole, I actually put threads in it so that a bolt will actually bite into it. And we bolt it into there. Oh yeah. We're gonna use our trusty Dremel tool to drill a hole. Now I have to drill completely straight down, no wobble, or it won't work. No pressure. All right, we've drilled through the metal and not into the plastic. Smoke it. Instead of using a bunch of like epoxy or tape or something like that, because we actually have a metal surface, I'm able to drill a hole and use a tap here and actually put threads in this. And then we can use a machine screw to attach it. And that way we know it's gonna be nice and secure. So if you ever have that opportunity, definitely try to do that. Plus, and it's removable. Yeah. Fill in this hole with some other washers and things. Up next, we have to make our pommel because the pommel is also gonna hold everything together. It's gonna to grab the tang of the sword, pull it against the hilt, and then just keep the handle and everything attached to one another. Got our crazy little coupler there that comes apart. We have our blade, we've got our tang, we have welded on our all thread here, our handle here, and then we have the bottom. Now the trick is we need something that's gonna hold on to this end of the all thread here and put pressure against the base of the blade there to keep everything connected. We're gonna take a washer that lets the all thread through, but doesn't go through the hole and doesn't extend out too far into the rest of the pipe coupler there. Hey, look at that. All right. So once we put our hilt on there, attach our, our gemstone there, paint it up, wrap it up, we'll be ready for battle. What I did is I basically put down a coat of paint and primer that gives us a nice metallic coat of our gold base, and then I got some gold shimmer paint. 
If you're able to layer paints, you know, get a nice base coat of your color and then layer it lightly, you're actually able to get a lot more three-dimensional texture in your paint. Paint tip, if you need to paint both sides of something, hang it up if at all possible, and then you're able to paint both sides at once. We are going to put our little decorative blade covers here on with pop rivet. We keep the gap between the two pieces. Behold the sword of Lapis, ready to rend asunder any monster that should stand in its way. Thank you. Uh, wait, does this mean I get uh, maybe like a real budget to make some more props and costumes? You know what? I think so. Keep grinding and we'll be in touch next week. Okay, talk to you then. Ha ha ha! Victory is mine! We have created a real sword! What? Well, actually, technically, for it to be a real sword, it has to cut things. To Ian's prize winning garden! <laughs>time to go time to go wait, wait, time to I go. thought you said we had permission to be here okay you know what i'm gonna need less talking more running okay just just go just go hey there thanks for watching this week's episode of grindstone workshop be sure to check back every week for a brand new episode and be sure to like skybound games on facebook and follow our good friends over at com to us until then Ryan, what are you doing here we were just finishing up go go, go.